much for taking your time out to be here um, this evening, the very first community engagement uh, meeting. So thank you for your support. Um, I am looking for a lot of feedback, so please um, be prepared to engage. Um, if I can ask everybody to mute their uh, mics, it would be appreciated. Uh, we Felicia, you're muted. How do I do that? Okay. Okay. So yeah, please, uh, please raise your hand and we, we will call on you. Um, I just want to start by saying thank you again for being here. I am Felicia Cross. I am the, well, five months in now, Director of Community Engagement for the Seattle Community Police Commission. And this is the very first public meeting that um, I am hosting for the for the commission. Um, we're doing a lot of really exciting work all over the city. And um, so, what, so one of the things I, I, I want everybody to know is that we all play a part to make this successful. Everybody has to be a part of, of this commission and the work that we're doing and the engagement. I do want to start by saying uh, we do have a few rules of engagement. As we know, this virtual world is very, very different for everybody. So we don't always have all the controls as, as we normally would if we were face to face. So just because it's virtual, please be respectful to all. Um, I, I look forward to hearing everybody's thoughts and opinions. Um, we're not all gonna agree all the time, but that's what's the beauty of working together in engagement. And I welcome that. Uh, I do ask that with that being said, if um, if we've asked you to mute, mute your um, mic, please do. If we ask you a second time, that's the last warning. And if we have to ask a third time, we will mute it for you. So with that being said, um, uh, let's have a real good, robust conversation. My very first question, let's see, there's 22 on the call. And uh, because I don't have a chat, but you can use your little, your, your little uh, uh, hand up. How many of you know about the CPC or the Community Police Commission? Show of hands of how many, how many know? Okay. Okay, good. That's a good count, more than I um, had anticipated. So, is there anything anyone wants to share with me of their thoughts or what they, what their, um, what their vision, how they envision the community engagement part of CPC, engaging with the community? What would you like to see? What have you seen? Some the good, the, just any input? Can you raise your hand? Nobody? Oh, okay, Paul? Can you unmute yourself? I think um, Dr. Gill had their hand up and I believe you can unmute yourself. Dr. Gill had his hand up first and then I see Paul and I think Malik, it's hard to see. Okay. Well, do you have any comment? Okay. Uh, I thought, I, who else did you see, Brandy? Because I can only see a few. They can unmute themselves. Okay. I thought I saw Dr. Gale's hand up and he said it wasn't, so. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Well, I, I, <laughs> I don't know what hat I'm wearing this evening, you all. Uh, Malik Davis, I work at the city, but I'm born and raised here, so I have opinions of how the CPC is viewed. And I, I don't know a lot of people who know about the CPC. I'll just talk about the people who live on my, my street. And I'm surrounded by all white folks, but of course I grew up with black folks. 
So I don't know many of the white folks that live next to me in Alki that know about the CPC versus any of the black folks I grew up with. I know all the black folks I know that are tied to the city in some capacity know about the CPC. But beyond that kind of those concentric circles, well, I, I don't know. You know, I don't see the CPC on Facebook, for example. Okay. Uh, my alma mater, the University of Washington, that has all these strong suits around social justice and um, the Center for Criminal Justice, I, I, I can't think of where I have seen the CPC being leveraged as an opportunity for uh, alums of the university to see themselves in the work of the CPC. But I also, you know, recognize the amount of time the CPC is around, has been around versus some of these institutions I'm referring to. Okay, so now, now, now I'm gonna go uh, feed my daughter. So these <laughs> folks have the conversation because I do have an uh, opinion I'd like to offer people for their considerations about the opportunity when I wear my work hat working for Alex Peterson, how we would see the CPC engaged. Felicia and Brenny have heard me talk about this on mm -hmm. the pre on the precinct level, right? There's this larger conversation insiders who pay attention to all this stuff, the newspapers and the media and council briefings and the like. And then there's the masses, I'll say, precinct based advocates and volunteers, people who are active with their churches, people who are active in Rotary, people who are active in environmental circles, in, in um, art circles, in ethnic art circles. Does the CPC see itself engaged in, in the life of the city that pre-existed 2012 or 2017? Thank you, you all. Good questions, Malik. Very good questions. And, and that's what we're here for. You know, we're, we're, of course, we're not going to get it all solved or answered or planned out in one meeting. But this is, this, these are the conversations that we're looking for. And I would just want to say with, with the CPC, this is our task. You know, this is our task to do this work. So, but we need, we need the input. We, you know, we, I can sit here and write up a plan, but that plan might not be what's best for your community. So it's, it's going to take everybody. And I appreciate those comments and, and please, um, I'm sure that there'll be more to come, <laughs> more to come. So. With that being said, um, I just wanted to kind of go over a little bit of the agenda that, that we have laid out for tonight. Like I said, this is the first meeting. I'm looking for your input. I'm looking for your engagement. And um, so I would just want to welcome you all again, once again. And then I want to welcome the CPC staff and the CPC um, uh, commissioners. And I'll, I'll just briefly, briefly talk about how the CPC is set up because we'll go into it more a little bit later. But CPC is set up as the community, Seattle Community Police Commission. And there are 21 commissioners that are volunteers through the city um, to do this work. And it's a heavy load. Um, there are seven appointed by the mayor's office, seven appointed by the uh, city Council and seven appointed by the CPC itself. Those are term positions. We're, we're working on some updates, but they stagger. And what the, what the commissioners are tasked to do is are to be the representatives for every district, uh, for every, every one of the seven districts in the Seattle community, also representing the demographic communities. So that's that's a that's a, a, a high overview, and then we'll get more in depth. With that, I would like to um, I would like to make a few introductions. Typically, how we, the CPC has work groups along with the commissioners uh, tasked to be involved in community meetings and events and report in and report out and bring um, so that we can bring the concerns of the community to the table and and work through them or just you know to be a face like like Malik was saying to be a face to be known as as 
one of the liaisons for the community uh, and the police department in trying to bridge bridge those gaps. So um, they also have work groups. We have uh, work groups, and, and I'm going to let Nia, who is, she'll introduce herself. She is one of our policy people on staff to just talk a little bit more about um, the work groups and what they're all about, and then I'll then I'll incorporate how the work groups will align with the with the engagement plan. Uh, Neil, would you introduce yourself and and your title and and uh, talk a little bit about the work groups? Sure. Um, good evening, everyone. My name is Nia Franco. I am the senior policy advisor for the CPC. Um, I've been here a little bit over a year. And as Felicia was saying, I am um, the primary primary staff member that supports the work groups. Right now, um, we have three um, ad, hoc, ad hoc work groups that we have up and running right now. They are behavioral health, um, the complainant appeals process, and police practices. So with behavioral health right now, what we're focusing on is developing a work plan and the work plan that we're hoping to present to the commission for a vote uh, revolves around three tenants, um, looking at officer wellness, um, looking at SPD response to individuals who are experiencing mental health crisis, and um, looking at uh, SPD's de-escalation tactics. The complainant appeals process work group um, is doing the work that it was charged to do by the city council to kind of look at and determine how there can be a complainant appeals process for any misconduct um, that officers commit and it goes through the um, investigation process um, and seeing if there is some sort of recourse for complainants if the outcome is not to their liking of that um, misconduct investigation. And finally, police practices. Um, this is a work group that wears many hats. Um, at one point, we were focused purely on demonstration management, but at this point, we are looking to um, start looking at OPA MARS um, and closed cases to determine um, essentially if we felt that um, what was found in those situations was sufficient or if they bear further, um, further review. Um, so those are the three work groups we have up and running. Another one that will be coming online soon is the state legislative agenda work group. And that work group focuses on um, advocating for um, legislation that would reform uh, the police department or increase accountabil accountability um, within the police department. Um, so those are the work groups that we have up and running and SLA is upcoming. Oops, sorry, I keep the going through my slides here. Any questions about any of that? Okay. okay. Felicia, if, the, uh, if this is inappropriate time for the question, but I thought I got some of that from uh, uh, what was just said. Are, are we talking to other police groups who are farther along in this effort uh, around the country? Um. I'm not quite exactly sure how to completely answer that, Nick. I'll just say out loud, and maybe my, you know, maybe someone else on the call can. But what I can tell you is what I've learned since being in this position, and what I've what I've learned from working with SPD and and some of the other work that I do. Uh, Seattle is probably a lot further than you would expect. So a lot further than you would expect, and and we and that's one of the things we can visit in more detail. If that's something you would like to, uh, you know, to to dive into a little bit later in our meetings, we will be meeting every second Tuesday from six to eight um, in the same in the, on the same platform for now. Okay, thank you, Mr. Gill.
forward to hearing more about that. Uh, Reverend Walden. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to say that um, that the CPC was set up by uh, you know a few years ago, and uh, a lot of the other models did take some of the information from the CPC and to create the other models. And uh, Oakland's been on a consent decree uh, for uh, almost 18 years. I mean, it's been a long, long time. Uh, Four three million dollars uh, on their consent decree, and so they did get some uh, more changes. I, I recently. Uh, that Mr. Gale was uh, alluding to, and that's been in the last three years. I'm in close contact with the people in Oakland, been working with them for 30, for Rashida and these people for almost 30 years uh, around the country. Uh, and so all of this is new ideals. Uh, these are new ideals, uh, and some of them are a lot uh, uh, further ahead than other ones. Uh, and uh, But the most important thing for everybody to remember None of these will work without uh, a better contracts, and I know that uh, Oakland is still working on a better contract uh, and uh, and stuff like that. So, so paramount in all of policing, uh, whether Seattle or other uh, other communities, are um, is, is looking at the contract, uh, how much uh, the cities every city give away in contracts, and how to how to bring those contracts back in line to be more constitutional. Uh, I, I put for the citizens, and so that's uh, that's something that I'm sure that um, I, at this site uh, community engagement, uh, I continue to go uh, further down the road. We'll be talking about contracts, and I think that that was a good question. I wanted to give Nia. I tell her that I did a great job. Thank you so much for being on the call. Uh, this is so exciting. I don't know how long mm -hmm. I, I can stay tonight, but this is very exciting for us to actually have this Zoom and have all these people on there. And I see a lot of people that I recognize uh, uh, on there. It's on some people who's on Zoom last night that's on the Zoom this night too. So anyway, uh, thank you. Uh, and then uh, that's all I wanted to have a comment on. Thanks. Reverend Walden, thank you so much. Uh, and thank you for your historical insight. If you don't mind, would you go back just a little bit and introduce yourself and, and who you are and the part you play with, with um, this whole thing, with the consent <laughs> Well, my name is Reverend Harriet Walden, and I'm the founder of Mothers for Police Accountability. This is our 31st year doing organizing in Seattle. In fact, this is our birthday month. Uh, and uh, we work on the John T. Uh, Mothers work on the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the shooting of the John T. Williams, uh, the late uh, Wood Carver with the ACLU and a whole group of other people to work to bring the, uh, bring the DOJ to Seattle. Uh, and uh, as a result of that, they did find that Seattle was out of compliance on, on, on many uh, areas, including constitutional police, uh, uh, stops in detention, uh, bias, uh, some parts of bias policing. And uh, and so we, the court, uh, we were not uh, a party to the, fi uh, to, to the filings, but we did get to be, have an amica status to that we could file uh, uh, in the court on, uh, on, the, uh, on, on, on the filings that the, that the DOJ or either the uh, the police department has had on, on, on working on policy. And so our job in the first four years was working on policy. And so we've only been we've only been in stature to, since 2017. And so you know it takes more than five years to get anything running in America. That's just for sure. And so um, anyway, it's it's been a long journey. Are we there yet? No, we are not there. Seattle is on the island by itself right now because the state of Washington and all the people that work on police accountability down at the state, and Neil was having a little reference to that, we got way more um, accountability from the legislation uh, that's going to impact the whole state of Washington. And Seattle is just island by itself right now. And that's the piece that we're talking about. Are we there yet? No, we're not there. But I think with the community and some uh, uh, and enthusiasm, uh, that we can continue to be on the road, and all of all of life is just staying on the road, you know, staying on the road, and that's all we're doing, just doing our best to try to do what we can uh, to hold police accountable. And like right now, we see what's happening in Seattle; crime is escalating. I mean, a lot of things are happening. That's not the purpose of this call, of this meeting tonight. So I'm not going to really try to go into that. But that's who I am. I just continue to do the work. That's all. <laughs> Thank you. Another question. Thank you, Reverend Walden. Uh, let's see, I see your hand. Valerie? 
Yes, thank you. <clears throat> I'll try to keep this brief, but I wanted to say for people on the call who perhaps haven't been following the CPC for quite a long time, like I have, and like especially on this call, Dr. Howard Gale has, the CPC, um, as Reverend Walden was saying, I'm just a member of the community, by the way, who's impacted by bad policing. Uh, as Reverend Walden was saying, the CPC was formed as a result of the consent decree with the DOJ, and I believe that was in 2012. Um, if I've got that date right, uh, right, wrong, someone can correct me. But um, since then, a lot has happened in terms of the issue of policing, accountability, um, public awareness about racism, especially in policing. We had Ferguson in 2014. So a lot has changed in the United States and then, of course, in 2020. So there are a lot of uh, new community efforts for accountability going on across the country that are a few years older. They're even newer than that. Some just started as of November 2020 as the result of initiatives. So there are things going on in Portland, in Nashville, in Newark, uh, I believe San Diego, lots and lots of cities across the country. And I, I would just like to say that it it's become a cliche in Seattle that we're ahead of the pack when it comes to community involvement and accountability. We are not. And it's one of, I think it's one of the most egregious things that people can say who are involved in this. We have no metrics and no proof that that is the case. And when you look at what actually happens in Seattle, the number of people killed by police is the same or actually more in the nine or 10 years since the consent decree. So I hope that we just put that cliche to one side and we actually work at looking at what is really going on in terms of policing and accountability. And it was said often <clears throat> over the summer when the police were beating up protesters that we had a, a robust civilian accountability system and we do not. I'll leave it there for now. Okay. Thank you. Well, I, re I respect your comments. And, and with that being said, I look forward to your involvement um, with trying to right some of the, the wrongs or perceived wrongs that um, are still out there, because that's what we're here for. And I, of course, we are, we are just up and getting started, but I value your comments. And I do look forward to um, engaging in more dialogue with you to get a better understanding of your perspective and your experience in 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 these um matters that we can move forward to incorporate some of the things other cities are doing to make seattle a better place because we we know crime is everywhere crime is up right here in our city and you know uh we've all seen all the things on tv but um a lot I, i'm not going to say a lot i'm just going to say we have to be accountable for what goes on here in Seattle first. And so I really look forward to your your engagement with, with this committee. Thank you. Is there, was there another hand? Uh, Mother Walden, did you have another question? No, no, okay. let me put my hand, no, no, no. Okay, I do wanna acknowledge that my beautiful daughter, Danielle is on the call. Can I see your face, Danielle? <laughs> No, hi everyone. Hi, mom. Hi, baby. So happy to have you on here. That, that makes my night. Um, going going on with the agenda. So there, I do want to acknowledge uh, my executive director, um, Brandy Grant, and I've asked her to just you know introduce herself and say a few words and and, and say you know a little bit about her goals and and vision for, for this council. Brandy. Thanks, Felicia. Good evening, everybody. Um, I hope you can hear me. I'm having a little bit of some technical issues. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I also want to um, second uh, a lot of what's already been said, thanking everybody for joining us tonight. 
Um, again, like Felicia said, my name is Brandy Grant. I'm the uh, executive director of the CPC. I came on as a commissioner back in 2019. Um, uh, felt like it was uh, much needed and uh, something I was really passionate about. I'm uh, the mother of a 15 year old son um, and I, I worry for him daily. Um, and the work that brought me to this work um, overlaps. Um, I was previously doing a lot of gun violence prevention work. And so it just seemed naturally leaning for me to be a part of the Seattle Community Police Commission. Um, I want you all to know that are on the call, for those of you that are already familiar with us and you know have your um, much respected concerns or um, um, areas where you feel like we can improve on or folks that are very new to the call, I wanna reassure you in a sense that we are doing the best that we can. Um, you know, we have all lived through the last few years, something none of us have ever witnessed or even experienced, um, this global pandemic that we're going through. Not to mention, we already had a pandemic and public health price crisis, as far as I'm concerned, on the lives of people that are lost in violence and the way poor policing can be. Not all policing, but bad policing. And so I just want to make sure that we don't focus so much on what has happened with the CPC in the past, because my hat goes off to the people that were the signatories who started this work, who um, really held up um, some really heavy uh, burdens to bear for a community. And just want you all to know that again, we are doing the best that we can and we're gonna do better and we will improve. And I think it's important to um, uh, give us an opportunity to work with you all and hear from folks um, things that you feel like are a priority. And I feel like the best way to be able to do that is to amplify voices and make sure that as many people are being heard as possible. Um, and so it's not um, um, one note. Um, I think there are very many people that have been impacted um, by policing in Seattle in ways that they had never been before. And a lot of these things became front and center um, during this pandemic. And so I um, want to charge you all, empower you all, employ you um, to work with us and, and not against us and, um, um, and start embark on this new journey that we um, are hoping to engage on to be um, an improved uh, police accountability partner for uh, the community members, not only that are on this call, but community members we've yet to meet. I'll pass it back over to Felicia, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Brandy. I put the um, screen share of, of, of the front of our website. I don't know how many of you have gone to it, but I mean, we're tracking, we are um, trying to be as transparent as possible with the work that we are doing. And uh, I don't, Reverend Wanna, forgive me, but I'm not sure if you mentioned that the other accountability partners along with the CPC, um, such as the uh, Office of Professional Accountability, of police accountability is is a three prong. We are one. The Office of Professional Police Accountability, I think it is. Mm -hmm. um, they change it so hard. I forgot. But um, they are they are accountable for if you have any type of encounter or witness anything involving a police officer or involving police uh, out, then they will take the formal complaint. And they are, you know, have a system that they will respond to every complaint that that they receive. And so that's one part. That's one leg of the three. Uh, the other one is the OIG, which is the Office of, Office of Inspector General. They're also implemented under our under this umbrella, um, being accountable for the systematic for the data for the for the trends that that uh, they review and, and keep track of uh, according to policing the numbers. So those, the three of us, uh, we do have to work very closely together along with SVD. And, and let me just say this, we can't get the work done without them at the table. I mean, I know a lot of people have a lot of thoughts and feelings, but uh, it's easy to sit and, and um, create all these answers if we're not, if everyone's not at the table that's doing the work. So I really want to want everyone to keep that in mind as far as as far as engagement. You know, um, I, I, I often ask what what people's definition of community, your definition of thank you, Pooh, 
and the definition of community, your definition of engagement, and your definition of community engagement, because they all mean something differently, but together they mean a lot. And so um, I just ask that we respect each other's opinions, it, but we have, to, we have to have the tough conversations as well. And that's the only way we'll move forward. So with, with that being said, is there anyone else from our staff or commission on the call? I can't see everybody, so. Anybody else from our staff or commission on the call? That's not. Uh, with that being said, um, I just, uh, the screenshot I have here right now is just to show if you've not gone to it, that there's a wealth of information here. And it, it, it actually tells you there is a police accountability recommendation tracker. And I, I'm not sure how many people know about it, but these recommendations uh, come from the community, uh, from from OPA reports and in other in other forms. Um, Nia, if Nia is still on here, she could talk about it just a little bit more. But I think this is going to be a deeper dive for us later, because I think we can use this information to really spearhead a lot of the the work um, to move to move CPC forward in in this in the whole engagement. This, they, there is a newsletter that comes out. Uh, Jesse has, um, he, he diligently keeps up this newsletter. So any information, any news reports, any articles that have come out, this news report, this newsletter, you can sign up to have it sent to your email box, is also a very good way of um, highlighting the work that's being done, not only here in Seattle, but in other places. And our mission and our vision, everything is right here. If, and like I said earlier on, if you would like to join the CPC, here, here's uh, one of the tabs that you can go on to see what it takes, uh, what the criteria is. And, and, uh, or if you just want to volunteer, you know, because really uh, this summer was not a good summer for us, but I plan next, next summer we're going to be out there with, with tables and with flyers with, you know, representing um, our, our role and our involvement in the city. So if you would like to volunteer with us at any, in, for any, any part of the events or activities, then that's always a plus. And so I, I, I put the, um, the actual goal and the vision and the mission of C CPC, but I wanted to have the conversation about it first just to see kind of like where people were coming from or what were some of the thoughts and the opinions out there. And I, I do want to read it quickly. It says, whereas, where it, whereas it is the city of Seattle's intent to ensure by law a comprehensive and sustainable independent oversight system that guarantees a police department that has the trust confidence and respect of the community. And that comes directly out of the consent degree. Uh, the vision is we envision our community and, the, and Seattle's police aligned in shared safety, respect and accountability goals. And the mission is that the Community Police Commission listens to amplify, just as Brandy mentioned earlier, listens to amplify and build common ground among communities affected by policing in Seattle. We champion policing practices centered in justice and, and equity. Okay, so basically that's, that was all the slides I had. Um, I wanted a high overview. We talked a little bit about the, the, uh, the plan for community engagement, which is we're gonna be we're, we're counting on you two to let us know, but we're coming up with a robust plan for to get commissioners out and about and visible in every community, under every district, under every demographic. If you have any knowledge of a, anything going on, please let us know. And it's not just to be there to show up. It's to be there to engage. It's to be there to be available to, to help educate 
Um, we, we, you know, I, I was showing, this is a brochure that we have. It's a two page brochure we have that, that um, tells a little bit more, tells a lot more about community um, police commission and, and some of the things we're working on and, and some of our goals and, and what we've done. So um, if you want any of these brochures, just let us know. Uh, there's a, that QR code on there as well. Um, I am fiercely asking the, the community, just as we did um, in, in past community meetings, to get involved, to, you know, help, help trench through the hard part to get to the other side. So in, a, in the next meetings, please invite people, share the flyers. If, you, if there's presentations you, you want to know more about a subject, if there's uh, speakers, if there's, there, you know, the sky's the limit. That's, the, that's been the fun thing about this job and what Grandy's vision for, for the commission is that the sky's the limit. So um, I'm excited. I'm excited about bringing forth the resources that I have to engage um, our community with our de department and, and city leaders. Um, is there anything else? Does there any questions, any comments? Anybody want to say anything? A question. Yes. Um, there will be a lot of discussions and a lot of difficult discussions among this committee, but do you, will this be taken back to the city council and back to the police department to make recommendations about how things can change? Absolutely. And that's why we have that recommendation, recommendation tracker. Um, that, I mean, that's not the sole uh, source, but, but these meetings are to hear the people not to guess, not to take what we hear in the news, not to listen to the Channel 5, you know, the Channel 5 report, but it's, it's really the, uh, our, our um, executive director and, and the other accountability partners meet regularly with the mayor, meet regularly with the, uh, with the other council members. And, and so what you bring to the table goes directly. Is, is there anything you want to add to that, uh, Reverend Walden or Brandy? Any? Okay. Yeah. So they've been asking for this. Uh, unfortunately, with COVID and everything else, I mean, we use COVID almost, it seems like we use it as an excuse, but it's a fact. But um, we're re we're ready to get out here. We really are. I mean, I have some really excited people to this this ready to do the work. Yeah, I see Agnes. Thank you, Felicia. Um, I don't know if you remember. Hi, but I, I do. I, yeah, I worked with your sister and knew both your parents. So yes, you did. Um, My parents love you. Yeah, glad to see you in this role. Um, I'm, I'm with a small political group, uh, and we actually have a committee on criminal justice and, pol and policing. And so I've been looking, uh, attending via Zoom, the CPC meeting for, for the last couple of months. And uh, I wanna, you know, I am amazed at kind of the, the breadth of things you all are doing. It, it's a lot. You're, in many ways, building a bicycle as you're riding it, which is always a tough thing to do. Um, but we're particularly interested in two issues, which we think will set the tone for what happens in the next 10 years. And one is the negotiation of the police contract uh, with the Seattle Police Guild. And the second is the hiring of a new police chief. And so uh, we're particularly interested in what is the role of the CPC in both of those efforts? Um, I guess that's a good place to stop. Hi, Agnes, this is Brandy, uh, the ED. Um, thank you for both of those questions. And um, we have, you know, we're in the process now of trying to, Agnes, get two uh, 
reinstate co-chairs for the commission. And that was one of the things that was listed on our list of priorities, the hiring of the new police chief, which in the past, I don't know how many people are familiar with this, but the CPC um, was a part of um, the hiring process. And we would very much like to continue to be a part of the upcoming one as well. Um, and we had actually started putting some uh, documentation together at the end of last year so we could be in front of it when the time came um, and presented itself for the um, hiring process to begin. And so Agnes, I would love to, if you're open to it, um, have you come and connect with maybe the governance committee um, and see if there are ways where there can be some type of cross collaboration with community members about the best way to go about doing that. Because this will be my first time ever um, in this role being a part of the police chief search. Obviously I've helped support it in the past, but in a very different role. So um, we would love to be able to kind of open the conversation up and see what that could look like. Um, but I do know that commissioners, the commission has been involved in the past. And Reverend Walden, if I missed anything, by all means, um, definitely uh, add on, because I know some of this predates me a little bit, but I do know that we have a vested interest as well um, in being a part of the police chief search for sure. Well, and, and thank you so much, uh, uh, Brandy. That that is correct. Uh, what we did have is that we did put together a whole like a whole of criteria uh, uh, around the search before what we did is we sent our engagement people out to the places where the police, the, the police uh, uh, that had made the cut, the final cut. We sent our uh, 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 community engagement and one of the commissioners, I mean one of the co-chairs to the cities to be able to interview and talk to the other grassroots people about the candidate. Because sometimes, uh, you know, you hear one thing, then you go talk to the community, you hear something else. And that was one thing. And all that's available on the process that we uh, that, that we under, uh, took at that time. And you mentioned about the contract. Well, one of the things that we had been trying to, to get uh, was uh, for an external uh, uh, advisor uh, uh, from the CPC. That person, we do have a person that, that's involved with that. It is confidentiality, and so therefore that we wouldn't be getting a lot of uh, in uh, updates. But we do have someone uh, that is a commissioner that has a bargaining uh, 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 as part of their job already in another place. So they are very familiar with language and those kinds of things. And so the other two partners, uh, uh, the uh, the IG and the uh, and the OPA. Uh, directors are their own uh, external advisor uh, themselves for their own organization. So this is the first time ever we've had uh, this level of, uh, of engagement uh, uh, around the contract. We don't quite know if the table is already set. I mean, I know that the uh, ordinance says that a year before the contract ends, like I think it was last January, just before COVID hit, there was a community organizer, there was a, a, a meeting at the city council and people were actually bringing the ideas of what they wanted to see in the contract. We won't know if any of that got in. Uh, and then what we do know is that when the contract was uh, signed this last time, when the CPC uh, was, uh, did ask the city council not to sign the, uh, the contract because we thought that it was gonna roll back, uh, roll back uh, police accountability and the gains that we had all the way back to 2005. And it did do that in some ways, but uh, every contract, uh, I mean, it, it, the contract that was signed that started in 2014. So therefore, I, and, and the legislation didn't pass in 2017. So some of the ideas and some of the things that we had wanted to be uh, part of that bargaining was not part of it. But hopefully this time uh, we'll get a better outcome. But I know that we have to keep our, uh, we have to keep our eyes on the ball. And so Agnes, uh, I think that what, you, what, what your group is working on is very important. And I like to. I, I also uh, I, I say thank you for uh, for stepping up, and uh, and I look forward to uh, hearing more ideas and the things that you all are working on, and how we can work together. Yes, thank Agnes, you. please. But um, right. let's set up a meeting if you want, just to kind of brainstorm some of the some of the ideas of things you guys are working on, and how we can help be involved. Okay, yeah, we're really looking to, to again, uh, you know, amplify voices. Uh, and so we'd be happy to do that. We've, we focused a lot on the state legislative work that was done um, January, February, March, because there were some really important bills. So we, we focused a lot there. And now we're trying to focus 
a little bit more on what we think are the two key things. Um, not that there's not a lot of other really important things, but as Reverend Walden said, uh, Reverend, Reverend Walden said, the contract is going to be where it's at in terms of you know going forward. So um, I'll follow up with you, Felicia, if that okay. if that works. Absolutely. Okay. I'll be happy to. Mr. Gill, Dr. Gill. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Gill. Um, I'd like know, to just have, I'd just like to have a comment with Dr. Gill has said, you know, and I'm going to take off my, uh, I'm going to take off my uh, commissioner hat and I'm going to put on mother's police accountability hat so that I can speak freely here. Uh, Mr. Gill is incorrect here. The community police commission has not been in charge of all of this since 2013. Okay. Because had we not got this legislation, the CPC would be going away after the consent decree was over. So we came into full uh, sort of uh, stability or status in 2017, got funded in 2018. So let's just be clear. Uh, uh, and I'm speaking as a private citizen and as a founder and, mother's, uh, and uh, as a person for Mothers for Police Accountability. And Mr. Gale has come to every meeting, has had opportunity to absolutely be engaged uh, in the in in the CPC and uh, chose not to do that. So uh, uh, and uh, and I'm glad that he's bringing information because information um, uh, is very powerful. But also the city was trying to come from under the consent decree on May 24th, 
they had already filed to come from under the consent decree. And the CPC filed against that, saying that they had not met all the requirements for police accountability. Uh, also, um, the inquest process has been stopped. Uh, uh, now they're going to go forward. Uh, and the CPC cannot speak the way it was set up. It, we cannot speak on cases until they're closed cases. Uh, and, and so now we have a fully uh, policy team. Uh, now I'm putting back on my CPC hat. Uh, mm -hmm. The CPC uh, is fully staffed with a great policy team. Uh, they do; they will have the trackers there to be able to track the policy. And I do agree with the one thing that Mr. Gale has said is that some of the other cities have found out, found out how to have more of the hammer. Uh, and, uh, and 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 so the IG is supposed to be the part of this that has most of the hammer. I mean, when the monitor was to go away. But please remember, community. Had we not fought for become permanent, this whole body what the, of community engagement would be ending at the end of the consent decree. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, Dr. Gill, I, I have listened in on some of the other pub public meetings and, and I, you know, I, I welcome and encourage you uh, to get more really involved in helping us to seek the goals that, that you know, that we all are looking for, and that's answers. That's, that's you know, accountability. That's a positive light. Um, and like I said, we can all talk and agree to disagree respectfully, and that's the only way we can move forward. So um, I do appreciate your comments, but but we, we got to stick with the facts always. Uh, who did I see? Valerie? Yes, thank you. I just have to say this because <clears throat> I've been attending CPC meetings since 2014 on and off, and I have been following them um, and talking, talking to Howard Gale about his very intense research and attempts to communicate with the CPC. I have to say this because none of us really wants to <laughs> defend ourselves when someone says something about <clears throat> wrong about us, um, I have to say that Howard has, you know, the makeup of the CPC has changed a great deal over the years. And uh, most of the current CPC are not long timers. And I happen to know that Howard Gale has uh, communicated intensely and in a dedicated way with members of the CPC. So let's just get that matter of history straight. I understand that it is very, very challenging when we come to the CPC with really very deep concerns and criticisms, but please don't make it personal. There's a real uh, imbalance of power here. People who sit at the table, although they are volunteers, uh, have a greater, uh, a greater platform than the rest of us. And this is the first community engagement meeting that I know of that has mm -hmm. been open for us all to talk in really many years, I think about six years. So just, just for the record, that I just want to clarify that for the record. Thank you. I can't thank you enough for those comments. And that's exactly mm -hmm. how I feel. And as, as a, the director of community engagement, that's my style. You know, that is my style. Uh, it, there had not been a place in the past, but this is our first community engagement meeting. And so therefore, I, that's why I say it. I look forward to the same enthusiasm, the same, the same um, drive to want to, for us to attack or, well, I won't say attack, but to, um, you know, confront and deal with all of these issues because every every issue that's been brought up has been very valuable and very important. And, you know, and there are a lot of things going on in, in the city. Um, so, and, and we are getting ready to face a whole new city government. So we got to stick together. <laughs> and so, uh, um, Dr. Gill and, and uh, Valerie, I, I, I'm sick calling you Valerie. Please forgive me because I would not want to shred your last name. But I appreciate you being here. This is the first meeting. We will be meeting on the second Tuesdays every month. And 
in between that time, um, there will be work group. Uh, I will be having work group meetings with with the commissioners um, to talk about, you know, where we're going and what 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 we're working on and um, what tasks we're going to you know, prior, how we're we going to prioritize the task for community engagement. This meeting, I just really wanted to just have what we're having right here, a conversation. I just wanted to introduce myself, introduce, introduce my ED, and introduce our, our staff and our, our, um, our commissioners as many as could attend to let you know we are here and who we are and to, to know going forward where you, where you have, um, the support to uh, get the issues out in the open to a discussion, maybe to a legislative table, um, you know, support in the community from the commission. And so I've achieved what I've wanted from, from tonight. And I, and I thank you all <laughs> in January. Oh January, yeah. January. Uh, well, but you I know, um, you. you know, we had a community a meeting uh, in 2018 about the contract we had another community meeting uh, probably in 2000 down at uh, uh, Community Passageways. Uh, that was a community meeting that was open to all of this community. Uh, and uh, all, all three partners was there. We explained to the community uh, uh, who all, uh, who uh, the commissioners were. Uh, some of the commissioners was there. Aaron Goodman was there. Uh, Emma, Emma Katarga was there. Uh, Joseph was there. Mm -hmm. uh, myself was there, and then we had a community meeting down at Holly, New Holly, around the uh, body camera uh, and the use of the body camera. So I just wanted to correct that since I am uh, the longest commissioner here, and I have only missed one meeting like Howard Gale has mm -hmm. uh, uh, and since 2013. So I've been in all of the meetings. I just wanted to correct that for the public record mm -hmm. uh, is that we have been out in the community, my, maybe not as uh, regularly, uh, uh, because the first part of the commission. I mean, when we was, we had a lot of work to do. The first, uh, the first uh, I, I, I engagement, uh, we engaged three thousand people in thirty days. That I don't think Mr. Gill was there, but that was uh, two thousand and thirteen when we did that uh, in community engagement, and we issued a report of that community engagement. So, being the history keeper, uh, I just wanted to mean that let that uh, let the people know and Valerie know that how many times we've been out in the community. I, I, uh, since 2013, it's been a few, haven't been out since 2018 around the contract mm -hmm. and that piece is valid. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Mother Walden. I, um, I didn't, by no means that I mean to, to take away from the work that has been done, but, you know, as mm -hmm. mentioned, we are a new group now. And so there are new, new vibes, new, new attitudes, new new drives and uh and everything so i want to take this moment and 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 move us as as far down the line as we can hi nick you had a question i uh, i do um from the perspective of involving all the various parties interested we certainly have i'd love to see rebuilding of the police department and increasing their numbers uh also the community at large working with itself and working with the police Enforcement. As a member of the uh, Rainier Chamber of Commerce in South Seattle, and as an involvement uh, member with the various police groups since Maggie Olson, I don't know how many years ago that was, but um, what, I, what I think is also equally important, and we would all agree, that the infrastructure, the scaffolding of any community is its schools and its businesses. And to the my focus has been on small business and small businesses very much with like, for example, Sige Gebru, Horn of Africa Services, 10 East African focused uh, community-based organizations, business is kind of the infrastructure. University of Washington uh, School of Business has an annual business plan competition to encourage startup businesses. I'm on their investment judge committee. Uh, so what I'd really like to do with, as we proceed is to engage the business community to whatever extent we can, particularly small, but the big business, the banks and so on, some of the real estate companies are worth bringing in because with them, we can connect with some major, major non-Seattle grant whores, uh, whether it's the Small Business Administration or some of the larger other uh, big grant people I can, we can talk about. Um, we work together. So stick them in the list and 
that that they would be a good member of the team as a as a force. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, I well thank you, Nick, for that. And so I'll look forward to you helping to get that message out and across and get them to our table. Um, the uh, another another subject for me and anybody who knows me know this is a top sub topic for me. But I, I can't wait to get the youth more at the table and involved because they have a lot to say. We we have a. Um, a consulting group that we're working with right now and we did a youth focus group uh, uh, last week and it was it was really amazing those young people and how they spoke up of, about real issues I mean like serious serious stuff and um, so I do anybody that wants to have a little focus on on putting together a youth engagement that would be great too. Malik I saw your hand up, up and down up and down did you have something you wanted to say? Malik, you're on mute if you're talking. Okay, he's not there. Anybody else? Hi, January. Dr. Gill, you uh, have another comment? Once again, I think that's what we've been talking about the whole time that we've been here is, 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 you know, generating, moving forward. So um, I appreciate your comments, but we know, we know the history. A lot of people do know the history. And yes, Reverend Walden is the historian for this city. And, you know, just to let you know, I was born and raised, grew up right here in the same house too. So I'm completely vested in this community as well. And so, yes, uh, although a lot uh, of those things are true, you, at some point we have to flip the page and move forward. So that's where, that's where we're heading with this committee. So uh, Malik, once again, 
Do you have a, have something you want to say? I, I do, and I, I say this humbly as you know, a Seattle kid, Dr. Gale. I, I I really like all your provocative comments. I, I've been back at the city for a year, but I go back twenty years uh, working for Margaret Pager. But I I, I want to um, put this out here. One, continue to talk about. The, the primal importance of the contract always being the starting point for any conversation, whether it be with politicians, whether, whether it be out on the street, I think that is so important to reinforce. You keep mentioning about the OIG scandal. And I, and I, and I wanna say this because when I talked about earlier, the people I live next door to or the people I grew up with are not insiders. As an insider, I know what you're talking about, Dr. Gale, but I know that that is not a, a breathable, inhalable, constructive way to get my brothers and sisters to pay attention to the importance of the three things that the CPC, CPC identified needs to be changed in the contract, right? So I mean, I'm, I'm talking about Malik being able to say to people I live next door to and, and the people I Facebook with, people I see at the Husky game. I can't show up talking about a scandal with the OIG because that's an insider's conversation. But I can show up with three points about what needs to be changed in the contract and who that person needs to contact or who at the CPC they should invite to their group to hear about what needs to be changed in the contract and who we mean to ask to make sure that that is moved. But this, I, I, I really want to say, to talk about the, this scandal with the OIG, I saw it in a, in, a, in a blog. I saw it mentioned in the Seattle Times. Right? I see it talked about on blogs. But on National Night Out in August, when people were talking about food and happy to see each other and, and who are we going to have in office next year, nobody said anything about the OIG scandal. So I'm talking about things being consumable, Dr. Gale. I have, I have, and people have heard me talk about the opportunity to see how the police department has with its precinct-based conversations it has with community. It's more than just showing up talking about crime statistics. So SPD at each of its precinct meetings, its captains have an opportunity to talk about the relationships mm -hmm. that were built from one meeting to the next building a role of contacts, building, building uh, folks who can step in as peacekeepers, people who can go talk to different communities and different dialects uh, in deferential and culturally appropriate ways. We need to enlist our police department in that conversation where it touches us. Dr. Gale, the OIG scandal, that doesn't touch us. I understand what you're saying, you're not mistaken. Thank you. Very good, Malik. We're gonna shift gears a little bit. Um, I would like to, I can't see the whole screen. So I'm, I'm gonna call off um, and I, what, what I would like is for anyone who has a final comment because uh, as we wind down, but what I really would like are your top three concerns or your top three um topics moving forward in uh your top three presentations what you want to know more about so we can start to have very robust um meetings productive meetings we don't want to just have conversations and walk away and come back and have a, the same conversation we, we're ready to get to work and get get some things done so uh mother walden you're the first one on my list Um, see, well, I'd like to continue this dialogue this way. I mean, this is engaging. Okay. I mean, I, I, we don't, I, I really want to appreciate Malik. I mean, really and truly, he spoke as a Black man that uh, really understands the issue, uh, who lives in the community and understands what has happened to Seattle uh, 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 and, and, not a, and, and have a lived experience. And uh, sometimes it's always good to have a person who has lived experience I walked in the shoes of our, our ancestors to actually speak sometimes. So I really want to uh, thank you for that. Uh, I, I'm just interested in this. I, I coming uh, and 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 seeing 
what can evolve. I've sat at many tables. I, I've sat at a lot of tables. I've never, you know, I'm always coming. And I, just to see what I can, uh, see how I can uh, be helpful. I don't know everything. I mean, if we did, uh, nobody would be able to be on the planet because it's too much to know. And I know that there's a lot of engagements that are going on. And uh, you mentioned about community, what community, because this is like a buzzword. So I would be interested in how people break down community. How do you uh -huh. find community? I mean, yeah. How many communities is, are you one person connected to? Because one person is connected to many communities. How do those communities overlap around policing or around childcare or whatever it is? I mean, and so um, community is a buzzword. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a buzzword and it's almost uh, overused. And so I'm interested in, in that and seeing what comes from that. I mean, I see, uh, I see uh, uh, former council member David Della on this call and you might want to call in him since he what, one time was a city council person uh, uh, and he might have some real bright ideas uh, that he wants to put to forward. Uh, so I would uh, yield what little bit of time I have to uh, a former council member uh, David Della. Okay. Thank you, Harriet, uh, and thank you, Felicia, for uh, putting together this meeting. Um, it's very important. Um, my comments are um, my comments are that um, you know, number one, uh, I think this issue about police accountability and connection with the community is still very important. Um, and and how do you effectively engage? The broader community in work that um, is done within uh, within the halls of power right now um, about policing and, and how do you break that conversation out into the community who might have a different perspective on how they see a, poli a police and police accountability and so I think that's a, a very important conversation to still have uh, and as um, Harriet mentioned, I was on the city council back in 2003 uh, when we were still kind of um, at the beginning of trying to define the three, you know, the three components of police accountability um, at the beginning of that. And, and I knew, because um, I also was a part of the public safety committee along with uh, Nick Licata. Uh, we, uh, we were the chairs of the public safety committee. And I think back then we were really struggling on trying to define uh, at what level of accountability do you allow the public to be involved in uh, with the police, right? Uh, rather than keeping it within, you know, the council and the mayor and the structure that had been set up. And I think that is still a debate that still needs to happen. But I, um, I think there has to be an appropriate role for the public uh, to continue to put pressure on the system to do its uh, to do its best, right? Uh, to move forward to a uh, one, adhere to the uh, consent dec decree, but uh, but number two, you know, uh, what do we do to move the system forward to, uh, for greater accountability? And that includes the conversation um, that we had back, way back when that still is relevant about um, you know you know how do you break that uh, that jam uh, that log jam that happens when you start uh, taking on the police guild and and I still think that that is a stumbling block uh, that needs to take place uh, that pressure has to come from the outside so number one I think that conversation still needs to happen and, and number two um, our, our city is about ready to uh, uh, rightfully so um, get engaged in a conversation about how do we view, um, how do we re reimagine, restructure, view public safety moving forward, right? Uh, and how do we do that in a way that not only addresses the issues that have been raised last summer, uh, but more important, you know, uh, um, you know, how do we do that in a way that makes sure that our whole city is uh, feeling safe and we have the resources uh, both, um, you know, uh, within our police force, but also, you know, services around, you know, uh, you know, uh, other issues around that. You know, how do we, how do we bring that all together in a way that, um, you know, uh, makes some sense? 
uh, and and a plan that people can embrace. So I think this is a conversation that still needs to happen. And so my question would be, um, uh, is is how do we see the CPC's role in uh, um, you know furthering that conversation about you know how are we defining and restructuring public safety in the city, but still hold them accountable to what they should be doing. And I think it's a conversation that um, uh, we need to have, and and we need to figure out how the public, you know, maintains a, a prominent role in in holding everyone accountable and moving forward in a way that makes some sense. Uh, so, uh, so uh, and then the last thing is, um, uh, uh, in full disclosure, uh, Felicia and I are involved in a group um, called We Are Seattle, and uh, what we're trying to do is we're trying to um, have conversations throughout the city, uh, not only on public safety, but also uh, to talk about homelessness and talk about economic recovery and to get the voices that have not been uh, involved in the debate up until now to, uh, to, um, to be front and center with some ideas about, you know, what are we gonna do to uh, um, move our city forward and hold our city leadership accountable uh, to solutions and ideas of voices uh, from around the city. And so uh, we are having those conversations at the same time uh, for the next six weeks, I think, uh, more intensely. But you know, the conversations that we're having today uh, that Felicia and everyone else is trying to, to do, and how do we include uh, that in the broader conversations that we want to have in We Are Seattle um, with uh, voices around the city and to dovetail uh, good efforts that are going on, um, you know, together um, and bring that in front of the, the leadership of the city, not only now, but those who are running for office and who will be in office next year. You know, you know how do we take those voices and how do we take those ideas and, and bring them together? So, uh, so I think that those are some questions that I'm really wrestling with, but I, um, I appreciate um, being able to talk about this because I was on the council when we were beginning to talk about this and some of the same questions and issues that we were wrestling with are still there. And, and how do we move those forward in a way that's gonna make sense for our city? So um, I really appreciate being here today. Um, I look forward to um, being part of the conversations moving forward. Um, Felicia, and, um, and I also look forward to figuring out how do we take some of the uh, uh, things that we're talking about here into the conversations that we're going to have with We Are Seattle moving forward as well. Yeah. Thank you for your time. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, David. Thank you. Thank you, Mother Walden. Um, does anybody have want to go next or do I need to call on somebody? Okay. Uh, January, let me hear what you got to say. Hi. Because I know you're an entrepreneur in this world, so. Yeah, I, I'm i working on a family engagement um, program, really supporting like co-parenting and things of that nature. But what happens is it's really about knowing the community and knowing who I'm dealing with and knowing what everyone needs. So I enjoy sitting on these conversations. I always have. Um, just to really understand the dynamics and understand how I can jump in or, you know, add my two cents here and there. But no, everyone's had some really great information, perspectives, um, experiences and whatnot. So no, thank you all for having me. Thank you, Felicia. Okay. Jim, did you have anything? Are you there? I am, I am, um, and I just uh, find it very interesting to be here and uh, uh, listening to all of the, what I hear are being very positive and uh, uh, similar thoughts that I have. So this is a refreshing conversation. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for being here. Uh, 
Hi, everyone. Hi, Felicia. Hi, Laura. <laughs> um, I am Laura Jenkins. I'm a community engagement coordinator with the Seattle Department of Neighborhoods. So I work with the city um, and I, I attend a, a few different community meetings just to hear what's going on and kind of take things back to the city. Um, and so I'm just here kind of listening um, to what folks are saying. I'm interested in this effort, Felicia, um, for community outreach for the CPC, and it sounds exciting. Um, I definitely agree with Malik as far as um, how I, I would, I don't think a lot of my neighbors know what the community police commission is or have, maybe they've heard of them, but they don't really know how, you know, how the commission works or how, like, um, how their lives are impacted by the commission, if that makes sense. Um, so that's just one thing. Um, I really appreciated what Malik was saying and um, I appreciate you all for letting me um, join on today. So thank you. Thanks, Felicia. Thank you, Laura. Thank you for always being there. Uh, is that Sierra? Sierra? Yeah, hi. I'm hi, Felicia. Um, I hi. <laughs> this is you. Um, so I'm with at Seattle University and I'm a research assistant um, for the micro community policing plans. Um, my colleague is here with me, Shannon. Um, so our work is kind of complicated. I've been doing it for a while um, and I have a lot of like, um, a lot of inner turmoil as well. But um, so what we do is every year we have a survey that we release to get um, community perceptions on, on public safety and that um, and we're even like taking a lot of feedback right now about um, public safety beyond just police um, and so we're doing that work right now and we just got finished with our um, community police dialogues um, that we held over the summer um, they're very um, I wish I hope we keep doing them because I've learned a lot about um, maybe how I can do better about reaching out to different community groups because I know it's 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 kind of hard for <laughs> uh, 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 um, for someone like me to do sometimes. Uh, but it was really nice that I start. I mean, it's a starting place to have conversations between people, um, and it was really um, so. It was like a little snippet of uh, my experience. But if like if Shannon wants to share after me, that'd be great. But yeah, thanks for having me, and I'm looking forward to more. Great. Shannon, you want to go? Yeah, hi, everyone. My name is Shannon. I am a grad student at Seattle University, and this is my first year on the MCPP program. So I'm super excited. But yeah, just to build off of what Sierra was saying, we just finished with our community police dialogues, which gave an opportunity for each precinct um, in the community to meet in a space where they could converse about their opinions on the police and start to um, build connections in reuniting the police with the community and allowing for the community to have a voice um, and directly interact with the police and essentially tell them what they think and what they wish that they could change about it and what ways that they can engage more with the police to rebuild that relationship, especially after um, what happened in 2020 and a lot of the, the breaking in relationships that happened. So we are currently working on a report from the results from that. So um, we are hoping to get that done in the next month before we administer the Seattle Public Safety Survey, um, which will be going out to all the communities, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Sierra, in October. It is administered in many different languages into all communities. So we are hoping that um, being here will also um, help us get the survey out to all of you and make connections with you. And we're really glad that we could be here with you all. So thank you so much for inviting us. Thank you. Uh, uh, Executive Director Grant and I have an appointment in, coming up in the near future with uh, Jackie, with Dr. Hofgott. And um, so that is one of the things I'm hoping to, to incorporate to, to get you know what once we have that conversation so you guys stick around okay <laughs> all right um ron are you there yes oh would you would you like to give me your top three or something you would like to say before we before we end up here um i don't know whether it would be appropriate 
this is what the unit would be. And okay. Any comments or thoughts? Okay. Not at this time. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's see. Q, what about you? Are you there? Yes. Any thoughts or concerns or topics you would like to talk about in the future um, community engagement meetings? Not at this time, but thank you for having me. Okay, thank you for being here. You're welcome. Let's see. Oh, Vincent, are you there? Who else can I see? Vince? Me? Uh, well, you can go ahead, Nick. I, I don't know. If, go ahead, Nick. Were you saying somebody else's name? I couldn't hear too well. It's okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. What, what are some of the topics you would like to talk about in the future? Okay. Um, well, I'm very interested in seeing how we can incorporate small business because they've been struggling so hard throughout Seattle from north to south. They're also an excellent way to network with the individuals. Uh, into individuals being mothers and fathers and youth and anybody who's an entrepreneur and also the big guys and the banks, whether all our big banks have pots of money, but they don't always have the connections at the grassroots the way Felicia is assembling here. So, uh, or, or the We Are Seattle or Seattle South. So the extent that we can formulate a package of goals and also plans of how to do it, I think our outreach can go up the ladder to or larger organizations and even organizations that aren't necessarily in Seattle. Um, that's why I asked the first question, my earlier curiosity was what other cities are doing something like this that is working? And, um, I, I know Oakland has had some efforts. I know that uh, Boise, Idaho has some, and I think Charlottesville, uh, Virginia is starting to crank it up, but we are us and we wanna do ours. Just if we can cherry pick some good ideas from elsewhere, it might be helpful. And then the last thing is outreach to the um, police force as individuals. So we can bring those individuals in to speak their mind on their community and maybe induce new people who could be good policemen to come in and apply for the job because of the friendly welcome they're getting from the community outreach that, that Felicia and your team are, are putting out. That's good. Thanks. That three. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, that was good. Thanks. Thanks. Who, who, Agnes, did you say something? Did you want to have three comments? Uh, no, I think I spoke to the issues okay. of, um, you know, the contract and the police chief hiring. Okay. Harnett, I see you down there. Harnett? Hello. Hi. Hi. I'm just here supporting you, um, <laughs> as always. I, but, you know, I, as a, like you and I, born and raised in the Central District and homeowners of our birth home um, and just the changes that have gone on in the neighborhood over the last 56 years uh, is, is interesting and homelessness is, is really heartbreaking to me right now and then our youth are my top yeah. three um, in the, the system the juvenile system and um, education the period we just we got to fix it so thank you okay good good ones yep Thank you too for always supporting me. Um, uh, well, Joanna, I see Joanna down there. Yeah, Joanna's here. <laughs> Hi. Um, I don't know if I have a lot to add. I'm mainly interested in prevention and engaging <laughs> and um, adults in ways that help prevent. Um, drug abuse and violence. Um, I've been here since I guess 77 and there's certainly <laughs> been changes. Um, 
one, I guess one thought I have like on current things is I always wonder, I always feel like the police are sort of like hurting themselves by continuing to support the guild president or some of the things the guild comes out with and it's like that that's just so destructive to their public relations or ability to communicate with even me it's like how can you do that so uh i am interested in seeing changes in the guild okay that's thank you thank you for being here too uh daniel Hello. Uh, don't know that I have anything new since the last time we spoke, so maybe I'll recap a couple of the things that I've, I've brought to you, Felicia, previously, and Shailene. I think I saw Shailene on the call. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, when I think about, I guess I'll, I'll set the table by saying I've been in Seattle for three and a half years now, um, so I'm relatively new, and I'm very new, I think, to like learning the system of policing here. Um, I really became involved last year, as you know, Felicia, because I live on Capitol Hill. I was tear gassed on my home twice when uh, SPD decided to deploy gas throughout the neighborhood. Um, since then, I've really been trying to get involved in learning the system of policing, learning police accountability, and, and trying to figure out, well, what avenues does a common citizen like me have for trying to make change? Uh, and it's been an incredibly frustrating process. As you know, you've, you've seen me go through so many different avenues, um, including coming and knocking on CPC's door. Um, I think as far as CPC goes, some of the feedback that I'd provide you or some of the things that I would, I would love to see you tackle. I think first, for a citizen like me, I think there is um, a real barrier to entry in terms of the system's labyrinthine. It is opaque. Um, it, is, it makes no common sense, like in terms of like who you'd speak to or you know, where you think you should go. It would be great if CPC could play a larger role in demystifying that for your average citizen so that then if they have a concern lar large or small, you could be a resource to helping them having that concern addressed. I think that, you know, that would be when I think of common sense, as I call it, common sense policing, like if I was thinking, oh, great, you know, CPC is meant to be the conduit between me and policing. I think that's base level, the first thing CPC could do. And again, I, I, you spoke to this earlier in the meeting. I think things like even explaining what the CPC is, the fact that there are three police oversight bodies, which as I've been working to, to understand the system, most people I talk to have no idea that that's the case or what the differentiations between the bodies are. So I think just in terms of like demystifying, I feel like that's number one would be great. Number two, you've talked a lot about um, it's important for people to be involved. It's important to have seats at the table. Um, everyone should, you know, need, needs to um, needs to pitch in. Everyone's necessary. I feel like I've heard lots of variations of that line. I think that there are a whole swath, I mean, even looking at the makeup of this room, uh, there are whole swaths of people who I who I think feel like that's not the case. Um, and I think that one of the things that the system could do better, that CPC could do better, is making sure that everyone really does feel like they have that seat at the table. And, there, and I think part of that is recognizing that there's no one size fits all solution. Mm -hmm. And so figuring out different ways to engage, to meet different communities and different people with different needs, rather than just saying, here's, here's the forum for this or here's the forum for that. I think diversifying options to meet more people where they are I think that's an important tactic to look at for CPC in terms of figuring out this piece of engagement. Um, and I think lastly, a, a personal thing with me is you've seen me pop up at a number of CPC meetings at this point of all different sorts. I think, and, and this is not a CPC specific problem. I have it with all sorts of different bodies that, I'm working, that, that, I've, that I've worked with as I'm trying to create police accountability or, or working on that matter. Uh, I feel like um, it is oftentimes the case where I will go to a body and what they'll do is they'll take what I'm saying and instead of listening to actually what I'm saying, they'll try to lens it through efforts they're already doing or things they're already thinking instead of really listening to what I'm bringing to them. And so I feel like the solutions that aren't tailor-made, they don't necessarily actually speak to what, what I'm saying. Um, so then I don't feel fulfilled. Um, I feel like the action that happens doesn't actually meet what I've said or, or what I'm hoping to see as the outcome. Um, I, I know that, you know, with a number of the police oversight bodies, the answer is often, oh, well, you should go to this meeting or speak to this person. I can't tell you the number of times I've gotten handed from one meeting to the next. And, and that's so frustrating for people like me, where it's like, like today even, my, my first meeting this morning was at 9.30 for my day job. I finished at five straight meetings through lunch. Um, I work in IP development for a gaming company, so nothing related to this. And it takes a lot for me to carve out two more hours of my day 
of my time to sit in meetings like this or even to prepare presentations or or write emails or you know and so it, it's really disheartening to then feel like oh I'm, I'm being passed off to another meeting your princess is in another castle right and so I think that one of the biggest things that I would ask is to look at, well, how can you make sure that in each interaction, you're really listening to people, but then creating a plan of action, you know, or at least having having different means for acting that then make them feel like that effort was worth it, or, or you know, like, cool, there's actually a response. Um, because then I think that that's really how you foster those relationships where people feel like, yes, this was the right place to go. And, I, and I'm willing to now give that more time, more, more, more of my effort and contribute to that because it will actually pay off. So I think that I'm sorry, sorry for eating up so much time. Oh, I, I think that those are through my experiences of the past year and, and my experience with CPC, the three things I would highlight to give some attention. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. You always bring it. Um, Brittany, did I call her Brittany? Hey, Felicia, this is Hi. Brittany. Um, Hi. I'm with the U.S. Attorney's Office and I'm going to echo um, Ron's comments. I don't think it would be appropriate for me to okay. comment at this time. But thank you for providing the space tonight. Absolutely. Thanks for being here to listen. And uh, Malik, did you have three top things that you want to want to address? I um, thank you. Uh, I I I think it, I think I'll, I'll I'll just I'll just compliment uh, folks who have gone before me. Making demystifying the CPC, I, I have to agree, is 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 um, is the opportunity, mm -hmm. and and uh, for all of us staff, you know, volunteers, you know, in this space to just you know pinch ourselves sometimes and say, "Am I having an insider conversation? Am I having an outsider conversation?" Mm -hmm. um, and, and I, I believe that relationships are mean uh, a great deal. And so when I read the newspaper of the judge's remarks about, you know, the city of Seattle, and apparently these are my, my thoughts, you know, people not, not talking to each other, that's a frustration that I have um, having been in philanthropy for the last 20 years at the University of Washington, the power of relationships cannot uh, be diminished in the least bit. And so when I talk about having gone to one meeting and then what happens in the intervening precinct meetings and having an expectation that the captain will have delivered relationships, I think the opportunity then is to say to SPD, how, how is the captain of the precinct leveraging the strengths of those members uh, of the commission to help develop relationships at the precinct-based level? Right, and if you have a friend who is connected to the gill, how how are you helping that person see the perspective from a lot of us about the opportunity? Right, I come back to this. You know, <laughs> don't we all agree that it's the citizens of Seattle who determine the terms upon which they will be policed? That's yeah. all. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Marie. Um, let's see, I'm gonna, Valerie, did you have um, any last couple of thoughts or? Okay, I'll, I'll make this brief. I think this thank is you. something we should probably take up at other meetings. I'm a bit con confused uh, about the conversation tonight in terms of the purpose of this group. Uh, because my understanding is that the CPC was formed as a result of the consent decree, and then it continues, as Reverend Walden said, on a permanent basis as the result of 2017 legislation. But my understanding has always been that the CPC's primary purpose was to elevate citizen voices and concerns in terms of improving our policing. Um, less about improving uh, SPD's community relations. Those are two distinct things. And as you know, because uh, I think you've worked in that area, um, SPD has its own community relations activities that go on. So I, I would appreciate in the future for this 
committee, if we can get clear about the distinction in that work. Um, I'll leave it there for tonight. Okay, thank you. I think that goes back to definitions and interpretations. Uh, Mr. Gill, I'm gonna give you a moment. Okay. Well, I'd I like to ask Mr. Gill, did, uh, Mr. Gill, did, could he answer any of those questions? Has he had any after any uh, people, has he been hurt by the police uh, in the last uh, uh, year? And also has any family, does he have family member who has been killed by the police? In Seattle. In Seattle. In Seattle. Okay. Okay. Oh, thank you. Uh, Vincent, are you still, are you there? You, you didn't come off of mute the last time. Are you able to unmute? Okay. Okay. Well, we've had a good conversation. I, I have enjoyed. Thank you all for showing up. I do want to allow my um, executive director to make any final comments if she chooses to. Um, I know she's busy helping me on the backside. So, uh, Brandy, did you have any any comments, any expressions you want? Um, outside of just thanking everybody for coming, um, we appreciate you and hopefully we will continue to be in conversation.
no, anything beyond that would feel very antagonistic. And I don't want to do that. I want to create a space where people can contribute um, and say what they need to say. And I think my place right now at this point is just to listen. So thank you. Okay. Please know that we have um, we have written down. We've we've gotten the notes from everybody's um, concerns, and and um, I encourage you to please stay engaged. And I also encourage you to um, to invite others um, so that we are representative of the community in which we live. And if, with that being said, if there's nothing else, we're going to give you back a little bit of your time. Thank you so much. I appreciate you all. Uh, thank you. Felicia? Felicia? Yes, yes Nick? It's, what's the best way for, to get a hold of you? Email or uh, phone calls? What's best for you? Email. Email for now. Thank you. Thank, okay. Th thanks, Malik. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.